Hello. Hey, everyone. Hello. You all right, guys? Let's just uh, share this out very quickly. Hi, guys. Hello. Uh, let's put this on today. Today would be really nice. No, it's, it's just, what do you mean, no groups? Do you need oh, to post it? Please. Yeah, you need bring it. Do you need to mirror? Uh, yeah, on on the normal one, please. I've managed to get it in the other one. But, uh, yeah, it's being a bit of a dibby dib. Right, let's put the uh, dibby sound. Let's put the. Yeah. Okay. Oh, how the very devil is everybody? Really? Well, that's good right. I think it's on. I think it's on me. Should be. Uh, should do. How is everybody? Uh, super duper paranormal hangover at the moment. So go on and get it out of the way. Let, let's hear uh, what you've been doing. Go on. I was investigating at one of Britain's oldest licensed pubs on Thursday night and until about two o'clock in the morning Friday. He got pissed there, the line. Quite interesting. Well, a couple of the guests did get drunk and were, um, one of them was down with me in the basement and. He accidentally lost his balance into a rack of, uh, I think, about 20 pound bottles of wine and knocked about oh. 12 of them over. Um, luckily, he didn't break any. I then pulled him away from that bit and he propped himself up against the gas canister, which he then promptly knocked over. Um, and then he went off upstairs. And then 15 minutes later, when we finished that vigil, we went upstairs and he's fast asleep on one of the tables in the restaurant. <laughs> so, um, that was quite interesting. And then Saturday night, we were filming for Truth Beyond Paranormal in Ely over yeah. in um, at Streatham Old Engine, which is an old water pumping station in Cambridgeshire. Yeah. And I think the highlight of the night was we were in the diesel room and there's nothing, no second floor or anything. And yet we heard um, footsteps walking across the roof above us um and luckily we managed to get it on camera as well at the same time and there was only three of us in there so it um okay it was a pretty good night it was very interesting so oh. i'm suffering a bit now so <laughs> paranormal handovers. Yeah. yeah yeah i can't stand paranormal handovers they're a pain in the butt ah right i was looking everywhere to see if i could see the um um comments because they're coming up here but it just says facebook user facebook user facebook user and so Rita, Sven, uh greetings from the netherlands thank you very much mate uh noreen eric everybody else hi uh who says i we always look confused when we first come on um that's because normally he's sharing stuff out and then the music just stops and we go Ooh. get caught off guard uh, that's very saying that so you know like um your eric gets gets caught off guard and his beard goes <laughs> when he gets startled that's what it is it's like that you know so uh yeah <laughs> so um so last week we had um our guest on and it was all uh phil cockball and it was all about um cryptids and stuff uh uk uh cryptids so i thought today we would get um young mr josh down there we'd get his um uh, stats on cryptid hunting in America because I love all all aspects of cryptids and stuff. Um, and I've been looking at all the latest cryptid sightings, and there seems to be um, this month especially, uh, and across the pond in America, and especially in Wisconsin, there's been lots of sightings of what I can only describe as like the Jersey Devil. There's been bit description. Yeah, there's been lots of um, reports of the big winged winged creatures uh that have been seen big black winged creatures and by that i do not mean an american football player wearing a pair of strap-on wings so uh over to josh how's it hanging over there slightly to the left what? yeah that, that, that's news to me honestly i've this is the first i've heard of that <laughs> oh, i've just been looking it up i, I have myself know? haven't seen any big winged creatures it's just it's been saying all the scots in here you saw a dragon Facebook user. That's that's um that's Eric. Eric. But Where? That he takes Eric Ricotta? It's he sits too close to the flux capacitor. That's what it is. <laughs> 
So, all right. Um, so, um, you don't know anything about the winged creatures. What do you Now, the only ones I've heard about, there is a somewhat recent... Uh, sorry. Mothman sighting in Chicago. Oh, wait, wait, cut you out. Say again. Uh, the Mothman sighting in Chicago. There's been a bunch of recent ones. I I think I talked about it a little bit last week near O'Hare. Uh, it's always by uh, postal yeah. workers, though, oddly enough. One of the, yeah, one of the, the things I, I that's on there was the Chicago uh, one. Yeah, there, there has been a lot. So does that mean that there's going to be something coming? I don't know. It's always in the same area, too. I mean, it even sounds like one guys are sick and there's somebody filling in on the for the postal workers. They see it. So. Yeah, it was right. uh, Ken, Ken County, Illinois, wasn't it? Yeah. Back in April. Well, I don't know if it was Ken County because I know it's like right by O'Hare and that's Chicago. Yeah, we, we got one. I've got one here back in April this year, Kane County, Illinois. The most recent Mothman sighting happened in Kane County, Illinois. Matt Sexton, 33, was driving to work on a scheduled stretch of road late at night when he suddenly noticed a large bird following his vehicle. That's one of the ones I was looking at, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah um, he had two similar experiences the year before um, in the same, roughly the same area. When you say you say he saw a strange bird, he does a strange big bird. It wasn't some fat fat Scottish lass with a kebab, was it? <laughs> no, but well, what's interesting about it though is this is like the, the the home of the Thunderbird story is like around Wisconsin and Illinois. So I mean that's something to throw in to the topic. Yeah. There was there was one in Chicago in two thousand and seventeen. See, I'm quite, I don't know what's going on down there, but I just said, ah, bollocks. Um, I'm quite a believer in, in things like the Thunderbirds and stuff like that. But when you look at the American, the Native American stuff, uh, <laughs> you're going to kick ass, Mark Landley. <laughs> um, when you look at look at their legends, and there's purportedly the, the, that picture from the Civil War, isn't there, of those guys standing on the pterodactyl. Some were proved to be uh, fake. But I think there's one that no that they can't rule out because it was an, they say it's an original uh, picture. What do you guys make? Oh, there's a bunch of cool pictures from like the 20s and like Western era of different animals and creatures. Some of them, yeah, look legit. Some of them, you know, mutations. But yeah, I know what you're talking about. There, that one. Yep, there it goes. Yeah. The one, the one I'm on about has got, has got the, is it Union soldiers stood there and they got like their foot on, yeah. foot on it. They shot it down because it was attacking them. And the, 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 the story behind it, the, the Native Americans went mental because they said it was a Thunderbird. I mean, there's been a lot of, there's been a lot of videos recently of these very large birds, but they seem to be getting poo pooed quite a bit by people saying, oh, that's CGI. Um, along with the pterodactyls. That has been one of the most common ones on TikTok lately has been these pterodactyls flying about over places and they're all saying that, uh, you know, Jurassic Park is real. I would say, too, there is something going on with the weather patterns and changes because uh, the past few years we started having pelicans here in Wisconsin uh, on the Fox River and that, that's not normal. We've never had that before, <laughs> especially when well, I was growing up. There wasn't pelicans around. The, the, well, though, there is, isn't it? They, they reckon that's, um, oh, what's your place over there that does all the weird experimentation, the military thing? Um, not not so. Harp. Harp. They reckon that they're doing all, all the weird um, weather control and this, that, and the other, and that's why. Uh, and what was it? Weather control, earthquakes, volcanoes, all that kind of crap. And that's why all Oh, weather manipulation, yeah. yeah only certain areas that are being destroyed and this that, and the other and it makes it makes for and it's normally the, the can you stop shaking the camera young lady thank you um and it, it's um normally places that the government sorry sorry the bobberments or military have tried to buy because they've got something going on in the area and then when people go no we're not we're not going to sell all of a sudden there's a natural disaster very convenient yeah 
<laughs> Very convenient. What do you guys think? And you guys in the chat room, come on. Come on, it's still 70 here. Uh, yeah, I don't want to know about your age. Come on, what's going on? <coughs> Why is it every time I look, she walks past the camera and then stops just so I can see her butthole winking at me? Cat ownership. So, yeah, what do you make, what do you make of, the, uh, of this stuff then? The um, uh, weather, weather controlling? No. Nah. Sorry. Look at what happened with Maui. That's what it's all happened. all these areas where they're supposed to build these smart cities. There's been these natural disasters. And it's the blue, wasn't it? It was the blue stuff. Because remember, we spoke we spoke about this on a couple of shows ago. The places that have got the blue stuff, it it's all mm -hmm. the blue getting... roofs, the blue cars, yeah. Affected. And they've a lot of people, a lot of people in China now have started painting their roofs blue. That's right, yeah. Hey, Jamie. Because they're, they're concerned that the same thing's going to happen to them. It's, hi, hey, Phil. It's, um, it's very interesting uh, and very intriguing because there's so many things behind it, like the, the lasers that were supposed to be seen just before the Maui stuff. You know, um, and there was another one. There was a there was a, 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 um, a laser strike somewhere in a city. I remember watching the videos. But I can't remember where it was. We spoke about it a while, but it struck somewhere in the city in a building. Went, uh, I think it was somewhere in the far east, but I don't know. Yep. Hey, you imagine seeing you here? <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Um, we're just talking about, um, well, we're talking about cryptids. We're talking about all the sort of stuff that goes on over here. Um but we're also talking about conspiracy theories as well. So we're mixing a bit of that in tonight. Even though those, you know, these two are being very quiet, which is unusual, you know. But, uh, I am <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's like I said last week, Wayne, Wayne was incredibly quiet, and today he's incredibly quiet. What the hell's going on? Well... Hey, guys, Jimmy, Jimmy, you talk too much. <laughs> yeah, I was I was always taught not to over speak over people. So when other people are talking, I just keep quiet. Well, I do, somebody's got to be the good one. <laughs> um, okay, uh, over to you, Wayne. Hello. <laughs> no, I don't. I personally don't think there is any weather control things going on. I just think a lot of these things are just normal standard natural disasters that are happening. Um, but at the same time, I wouldn't rule out things like the Star Wars program continuing, even though they said they'd cancelled yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and, and that would explain what? all this business with the lasers. What do you guys mean? Sorry. As we said last, uh, last week, we mentioned about Dragonfire. Yeah. So we know that this technology is possible. Yeah. So yes. maybe that is. Yeah. What do you make of the new age spiritual people that are saying that they're helping fight the weather manipulation? I don't know if you saw any of that. There's actually a bunch of people when the hurricane was going on that were doing like jump circles and stuff and trying to put out positive vibes to change it and make think they might have actually changed the levels of the hurricane. Yeah, because they're trying to... Um, they, they, there's, I'm actually quite interested in that. They, there's been a lot of... So I was just playing my nipple there. There's actually... <laughs> <laughs> there's, <laughs> we got that type of show. I should call him Little Mark. Um, so, yeah, there, there's been quite a lot of them saying that they're trying to build up the Earth's vibrational frequency, frequency because we're headed towards... Uh, uh, what do you call it when you go to a higher place? Higher vibration, uh, higher density. density. We're supposed yeah. to be going to the next level, yeah, but they reckon well, that loads of yeah. yeah, yeah, they reckon that loads uh, of ready for it. So they're trying to build, yeah. it, build it all up. Uh, who's that? Yeah, that's no, Sean Bond that I had on these groups and has got a show about doing that. It's kind of interesting. Well, the thing is, is I, I, 
there's a lot of truth behind it because everything is is vibration. All our mm -hmm. if we didn't have vibrations in us, we just go <laughs> all our atoms would fall apart, you know. So a lot of the people so, doing it are Reiki practitioners that are yeah, form yeah. coming together and doing it, and they're doing it viral. You know, I mean, there is something to manifestation. We know that there's a little bit of truth to it. You know, positive vibes. Well, I mean, when you say positive vibes to uh, Wayne and his missus, they all go red, blush, and run upstairs. I don't know what that's about, but uh, you know. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, I did see. Um, a whistleblower. I read. It, oh, I can't remember where I saw it, but I read a, a whistleblower report. They reckon that something did actually happen at the, at the Miami thing, and this was a, a government paper. It wasn't a, a, a load of bollocks paper. Um, yeah. and that the actual thing that happened where all the police were called was a look at what's going on over here whilst this is actually going on. You know. Yeah. It was there has been there has been a lot of videos out there on Facebook and TikTok where the the person that actually managed to get video footage. He had duplicated it and sent it elsewhere before he was arrested. Yeah, that's and right. he had now turned around and said that he will release that video footage. And the last I heard of that, I'm sure people were very concerned about his welfare because I'm a, yeah, I can't be on it, but I'm sure he he either disappeared or he's put himself in hiding because he knows that people are going to try and get rid. Oh, we we know how this is going to go. You're going to find him, and we'll never hear about it again. I am positive that my country has groups to to erase people in this situation. They're very good at that. They're very, uh, Nico Sharp, what did I just pitched off oh. blue paint? Well, with the, yeah, that's something too we should talk about with the hurricane. What do you guys make of the mercenary dudes in the black helicopters wrecking shit? Any of you guys see the footage of that? No, I haven't. Uh, please explain. There's, ton of it uh where people came down to help uh with the hurricane the first yeah. one and uh there's black helicopters and dudes in combat here coming down on march and just flying over and just wrecking stuff bottle cases of water supplies generators pushing them down you know just flying over so shit goes flying circling and doing that why would you do that there is also a town where fema refused to help they said they didn't have the funds. Hmm. Hmm. Now, why would they be trying to make the population slightly smaller? That sounds a bit odd. Not like they would ever do anything like that. Very strange. Said, Reed, who's that last comment? Can you see that, Mark? Just read the Warhammer 40k, or know what will happen. Yeah, it's Sven. That's Sven. Uh, just read Warhammer. I hope we don't end up there. I hope we don't end up there. Do you know what I was? You know we've got our favorite guy on TikTok, the uh, the guy from the future. I was yeah. watching his latest one today, and he he th uh, what was it? It's going to happen in November. Uh, all the famous landmarks throughout the world, like Big Ben, um, uh, the, the uh, Notre Dame Cathedral, all that stuff. Apparently, all the all these famous landmarks are just going to go. <coughs> And collapse all at the same time. Only those, and no one knows why. And that'd be interesting. And uh, and again, he was talking about next year, all the the weather phenomena kicking off, phenomena, do, 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 do. Um, and how next year, twenty twenty five, yeah, we're we're again, we're supposed to be having irrefutable proof. Now, if I remember rightly, we said twenty twenty five and twenty twenty seven, didn't we? That is, yeah, it, yeah. 27 is the final t chance they've got to put out the proof that uh, our, our friends from other planets are here. Uh, and this is the bobbin which we're talking about, because if they don't, our, our visitors from other planets are just going to go, hey, guys, we're here. We, we, you know, they, they lied to you. We've actually been here. We've been talking to them for a while. Hey, guys. Hey, you guys. There's, a, there's some people saying on TikTok that it feels more complex than that, too, that there is a group that we're working with, and another group came through and was like, you can either hand that group over, or we're just going to come over and arrest them, and we don't care about who sees us and what happens, because we want that group gone. I mean, that's a possibility. Well, oh, you mean aside from the seriously overpopulation, the planet is only equipped to 
handle five billion people we're approaching eight billion uh, yeah no you're, you're absolutely right uh, but i again i i was i um one of the rabbit holes that i go down in the week they were saying that this it was i think it was the who and fema and somebody else gave out the official figures of the population and these these the the, the rabbit hole that i went down was saying they're the only people that have given out official figures and when other people have worked out with like the worst case scenario of everybody bonking like mad and making loads of babies we don't get anywhere near eight billion so it's like which is it is it eight billion is it somebody's fudging up this on purpose what oh and another um set of rules has appeared you know the one that got blown up the stones yep yeah, yeah. another set, another set of those has appeared in europe i can't remember where but another one the guide stones another, another set's appeared same rules or same exactly the same it's exactly the same okay. uh i can't remember where the hell i saw it let me have a quick look talk amongst yourselves you know well, I, I, we're I, just I, in need of a zombie apocalypse i say it's already happened look at oregon and california france i think we just just need an apocalypse i'm not, I'm not worried about a zombie apocalypse I just want an apocalypse <laughs> Um, who said that about that was a deadline, Mark Manley? I missed that for alien disclosure. Uh, last disclosure. year, was it? Was it last year? Um, you know, there was all the hoo ha with the videos and, and the American government saying, Yeah, they're here. And then they went, No, they're not. Yes, they are. No, they're not. Yes, they are. No, they're not. And then all the, the, the whistleblowers went, Yeah, they are here. And then the American government went, Yeah, okay, they are here. Or, and now, after all this time of saying they are here, they've gone, No, no, no apparently according to lots of sources and i mean lots of sources but when you go searching on your rabbit holes not on your mainstream browsers you have to use other browsers the collective uh and the collective thoughts of pretty much everybody in the ufo committee uh community and also space force and oh god what, what do they call it the galactic federation same as bloody star trek uh, yeah, it's like They've all said that the governments of the world have been given until 2027 to bring us up to speed with the fact that there are people from other planets here. And this is why they're slowly drip feeding and drip feeding and drip feeding until they're going to go. I know. It's like the James yeah. Webb telescope thing. Where they but some of them people have been saying that for the past 25 years. It's yeah. just coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Exactly. Something happens and it always puts back and back and back and back until that person dies. And then it will get to the deadline and something big will happen that will sidetrack us all from what should be happening and then that way they can sort of hold it back for a little bit longer so they can give it another year because all oh, this is going on you well, know we, we've got certain thing going on in the east at the moment which has taken over two years you know we don't need to worry about anything else at the moment because that's going on well, the thing is, it's supposed to have been those guys up in that? their ships, isn't it? Who said to the governments of the world, you've got till 2027. Otherwise, we're just going to come out and go, hey! And their ships are going to be seen everywhere and it'll be irrefutable proof. So, but what, this, this, uh, what reasoning would they have to do that, bro? Um, I can't remember. It was also all to do with part of joining the Galactic Federation or some shit like that. I sound like a complete nut job, but when I used to live in Howden, we were reporting on this. The same as when we were to the impulse engines and warp engines. We said they were coming, and they are, you know. So well, I feel like I'm, but, but everything from sci-fi eventually becomes real. I mean, this you know, it puts out that idea. You know, we never back in the 1800s, nobody was honestly thought they were going to go to the moon. You know, that was actually a place. You know, there was just that cool thing of that unobtainable thing and then we got there apparently <laughs> well it's like the moon um again when they're all starting to explore the far side of the moon and they're going oh there's nothing there there's nothing there and then if you follow the trails and look for the echoes of these um rabbit holes you'll find things going actually there is stuff there we can't quite report on it yet because we're not allowed to but there is actually stuff there and it's millennia old and it's been there for a lot longer than it should have been like the chinese website that wayne and i were looking at and we're going to we're going to report on um because we'd seen pictures of the dark side of the moon with bombed out buildings and this that, and the other and we were going to put it up on the show and have it all up there the very next day we started to do our special report on it and the whole 
the whole website and anything whatsoever to do with that Chinese website had been gone, had gone, wiped out of the web. And I went down the dark web looking for it and it was gone, all gone. That's wild. Well, you couldn't find us on the dark web either. Yeah, yeah. Well, it it because it came out and it, it was um, it was saying that they, it wasn't it the remains of buildings that NASA have bombed because they don't want uh, people to know that there's actually there there used to be a civilization, a community, a community. Yeah, because there was stop off port. Yeah, because uh, the official the official. Um, ending of the Apollo missions ended on Apollo 17, but there is a claim that there was three more missions after that, and it was yeah. possible yeah. that those three missions were the ones responsible for actually destroying what was on the dark side of the moon. Yeah, but they didn't destroy it all. There's still stuff there. Yeah. There's still stuff there. What's this? Look, our government doesn't like it when we smoke weed. Drinking isn't healthy. They won't make it possible for us to survive without working a minimum of 40 hours a week. And it's impossible to go anywhere because we don't have the money. We need to unalive something. There was a report we we read we said about they were going to make it impossible. The, the bobberments were going to make it impossible for us to be able to afford to go on holidays, so that we could all be contained and we'd stop going to different countries and stuff like that. Do you remember? Yeah, and uh, some countries are actually starting to do that. Spain is starting to put a, a tourism tax in place. Greece is starting to put tax on tourism. Um, but they're not vast amounts of money and it's not breaking any banks or anything to, to do it. Um, and it is just a small tax, but there's nothing to stop them from rising those taxes. You know, if they raise them taxes, then it's going to get to a stage where people are going to say, well, if I've got to pay this tax, I'm not going to go. I'll stay in my own country and because it's not affordable elsewhere. And that's, you know spend your money in your own country that's what they're saying there's again um and this all comes to there's something coming when you look in the uh paranormal community as a whole but look on the conspiracy side and look on the um not cold reading uh when that when they can see things if you give them coordinates uh wayne how stop smirking and tell me what the bloody word is I don't know. I've just seen. I've just seen Eric's com comment. <laughs> oh my god! I just found out about the TV tax in the UK. Yeah, you have to pay for a TV. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's That's not a nuts. tax, Eric. It's not a tax, Eric. It's a bill, and you don't have to pay it. Oh, you just can't watch BBC TV programs or live TV. That's right. Yeah, remote viewing. Thank you, Eric. Yeah, the remote viewers. There's a, a global collective of remote viewers, and all this stuff has, has said there is something coming very very soon and that's why everything's being ramped up that's why all these official sites is that, are being ramped up as well that's the thing i keep hearing with remote viewers is that there's either an or alien race coming or the pole shift and the pole shift is far more terrifying to think about than yeah, yeah. having a visit <laughs> Yeah, when that pole shift comes, I I know a few places around there to go to survive, but it's where you can get there. You know, it's not good if that pole shift comes. Well, yeah. if we have that pole shift, I'll just have to hang my washing somewhere else, won't I? You'll have frozen kecks, mate. We did that a couple of years ago when it snowed. We left the washing out on the line and it froze. So um, who, need, who needs to look at the comments in the chat room to see the silly ones that come out? Hey? If, if the pole shift comes, we're all dead unless we can find somewhere to escape the uh, cold. Uh, anyhow, we are pretty fucked. Yeah, you're pretty much right there. Um, but I, mm, I don't know. I think my own personal thing, and we've all spoken about this before, is every time there is a, a, a new epoch, there's a new reset, you know, uh, a, a pole, pole shift, whatever you want. Pockets of the previous ones remain, and that's why you get the the legends. That's why you get the red haired giants, the giants with two rows of teeth, the nephilim, this, that, the other. And it's it's all it all kind of makes sense. And when you think that we're all we've got DNA in us, but nobody knows where it comes from. You know, when you got the uh, universal blood, no one knows where it comes from. 
you know i think a lot of that uh, kind of makes sense i know the bobberman called some remote viewers back earlier this year so i know they use them yeah they, they've used yeah. them since, god they've used them since the late 50s as far as i'm aware yeah uh, i mean it's nothing new i mean it just was developed in the 20s yeah during the whole medium shift and can you imagine being a Bobberman remote viewer and a good one, a really good one that's been proved that you're really good? And if you really, hey, Lynn, if you really, really, really wanted to fuck them off, you could just come out, they could give you stuff, and you could go, oh, oh, yeah, I can see that. Uh, um, oh, yeah, Vladimir Putin, he's, he's bumming his best mate. Yeah, I can see him now. He's, he's, he's got a whopper. He's got him out there, and he's a... Uh, it looks like a tub of, I can't believe it's not butter, comrade. You know, you could really, really screw screw them over by coming out with all this stuff. And they just, they can you. Can you imagine that? They probably have you hooked up to machinery, though. You know what I mean? They probably monitor your heart and your sweat. And... That, would, that would be still quite cool, though. Can you just imagine that? Oh, yes, I can see this. I don't know. Um, There is something coming. Um, If you, if you, uh, if you look in, into the... UFO community and the cryptid, uh, uh, not cryptid, UFO and conspiracy community, Phil, you'll, you'll see what we mean. Just just look it up. It's supposed to be by 2027. Whatever is going to come is supposed to be happening, and they've got to, they've got, the, the bobberments have got till then to inform us of whatever the hell this thing is. So, you know, I'm yeah. hoping it's not one of the good, one of the great resets, because I don't want to be around when that happens, you know. Um it I do hope. I've got one thing though. If it happens, I I want it to be like bang, so we don't know anything about it. But can you imagine finding my skeleton with what with with parts of a metal leg, like in in three, four, five hundred years time, and they go, "What the fuck is this? It's a fucking android!" Five hundred years later, and I'm still screwing them up. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of androids, you guys see that Tesla bots are about to be rolled out. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what to make of them. Don't know what to make of them. Because but, uh, what I don't uh, understand, what I don't understand is that Elon Musk has stood there and said in his own words that there is an issue with AI and yet he goes forward with allowing these robots to be made. Yeah. Because nothing better than says that is all the other AI is terrifying unless you buy a Tesla. <laughs> well, I don't mind it. One of the market. If he wants to supply the Dark Mirror Radio Show with with um, some uh, uh, a few Teslas, you know, I don't, I have got no problem with that. You know? I'd, I'd quite happily talk about uh, Elon Musk and Teslas. Um, you know, uh, zombie apocalypse. Catherine, what is it with you in the zombie apocalypse? The uh, bobbermans of the world have actually got a paper in uh, in what to do in the event of a zombie apocalypse. Straight up, we do see it. Yeah, and they've got the UFO spotters handbook for the, the police and everything. And do you remember we said it wouldn't just be America that had them? It's starting to come out over here now. Yeah, Japan have got them as well. Yeah. But they, of course, these things aren't real. These things aren't real at all. There's no such things as UFOs or aliens that had to get one in. Um, You know, there's no such thing as them at all. But uh, yet they've got these uh, handbooks for uh, all, the, all the police, and that includes military police and... They're starting to go out to all the uh, police services around the world. But, of course, these things don't exist. Well, don't. Well, they never have done. We're the only known living beings in the universe. Lots are coming for your jobs. Who needs humans anyways? The jobs are gone already. <laughs> it's it's going to be a, a case of one day, you, you, you know, like for those who don't have another half, they're going to just be able to go out to the shop and get themselves whatever they want and come home. This is the new Nymphomania 5000, and it'll look and act like a real person, you know? I think it's bad. I, don't, I think AI should be allowed to get to a certain stage, but I don't think it should make itself aware. I think that but it's like I, said, like I said the other week, it is going to be Wally all over. Whoever wrote yeah. the whoever wrote the storyline for Wally has pretty much got humankind's future down to a T. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. It's um, And a lot of the, the games I play are like that. 
I mean, obviously, obviously on Warley, we rely too much on technology. We we buggered up the planet, so we all ended up going off in a big in big spaceships. We became so lazy that we became fat because we were still being fed but not exercised. So we were floating around on these other boards, yeah, and an AI tried to take over by not sending us back to Earth when plants were found. Yeah, that's right. And and it's and it looks like that is the way it will go because we're relying too much on technology now. You see supermarkets, they're shutting down human run tills in favour of self service checkouts. And as we, and that's how it's gonna become. So I'm hoping that we get to the point where we, we can start to colonize other places. Because I mean Elon Musk wants to do the Mars thing, they're talking about you're going to go boing. There you go. Uh, they're talking about uh, Titan and uh, is it IO? That they, yeah. they, they put colonies on. Uh, and now they're looking at other places. From what we've spoken about before and what we know about certain whistleblowers, there's supposed to be places there in place already. Mars, IO, Titan, to name a few. There's a few more out there. So... What do you reckon of that? Yeah, I can't remember what exact figure there was, but there was something like all the possible stars and uh, or suns that are out there. It would work out that there was so many million of possible oh, yeah. habitable planets out there. For every dot you see in the sky, there's two two planets capable. Right, like the Emperor protects us. So. <laughs> <laughs> But it it can't it may not be just silicon uh, as uh, carbon based like like us they they've said there could be silicon based life like some of the cryptids that could be silicon based cryptids you don't know, you know exactly um, um oh, what's going on oh, I'm looking at the live feed on my iPad and all of a sudden we've gone into fast forward <laughs> what. Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, literally, our mouths are going that fast. You probably should see steam or smoke coming out. We literally, <laughs> <laughs> um, what was it? Oh, that's what I wanted to ask you, uh, Josh, over there. Um, because uh, dogmen and stuff over, over your neck of the woods are completely different than they are over here, aren't they? Um, so yeah, I, say, would you like to, to give us a few insights into what dogmen are like over there? Well, they wear uh, Chanel. They sometimes wear Boss. Yeah, go on. Well, they they like the the song, except they're not in London. You know. <laughs> Do they? Is it is it right that over there there's the stories of them in in groups going on mass and attacking, like the one I read about? I have honestly that. never heard a story ever of them in a group. No. And when there was a movie, yeah, it was always every time somebody's had a sighting, it's always been just one. What was so I don't think that whole pack mentality thing. Yeah. Well, suppose if if it is genuinely some some type of some, one of us that's come off the evolution ladder at some point and has the ability to do that, I suppose if you've got human DNA DNA in there at some point, they're not going to want to. They're not going to want to be seen. They're not going to want going to want to be found. You know. Yeah. The 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 whole group thing. I've read a few stories about groups. Um, there was that house, wasn't there, where the guy was sat out on his porch with his his son, and they could see these things on the on the the, the fence line of where the woods were, watching them. And he got back in the house, and then, long story short, these things were trying to get in the house all night. And then the next day, they found all the claw marks and everything up on the the porch. I went, there was a porch that went all the way around the house and everything. Um, I found that one quite interesting. That was supposed to be an eyewitness thing. It wasn't a made-up story. That kind of reminds me of the Goblin UFO story from the 50s. You know what I'm, yeah. what I'm talking yeah, about? That, yeah. Do you think that when these guys come here, do you think that, that this whole... I mean, at the end of the day, we all know there are people from other planets. They are real. They are here. We all know it now. We, we, it's been proved so time and time and time again. Unless you're a complete dumbass and you believe every single thing that the bobbin has come out with, you know it's real. Um, do you think this is all to do with tech? Do you think it's the, bo the bobbin Because we know, again, that 
certain branches no. of the hobby are 300 years ahead. No, there's too much to more when it comes to dog man from generations to generations before us. I don't think it's the government thing. I mean, maybe some cases, this might be some like genetic thing the government tried to make, some sort of super soldier, you know, machine splicing. But I think, you know, I think there's something ancient, maybe even older than us. Well, there's this tale, isn't there, that when the um, Anunnaki made us, uh, they made almost like caretakers. But these caretakers look like us, but had the ability to, they had animal, animalistic I ability. I don't know how much I even believe in the Adam that he made us in the theory anymore, because there's so many with the remote viewers where they just keep seeing like different, this weird species, which I didn't think was what they described as the Anunnaki, that just go around the planet, the planet, seeding, the seeding, the seeding, you know, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. The, uh, what were they called? The, the, they're called the caretakers, aren't they? Yeah. I completely misread that. I thought that said a few years ago a 48,000 year orgasm was found and I was thinking, how the fuck can you freeze <laughs> one of them? Organism was found in a block of ice in Antarctica and that is the start of the thing. Yeah. Uh, Don't take in stray husband. Found inside a long extinct species of beetle, the characteristics of said virus affected the brain in insects such ways that it was confirmed that the previously carnivorous beetle had resorted to a 100% carnivorous diet, which included self cannibalism and the ingestion of others of the same spe species. Since the virus was discovered, it has been evolving at such an alarming rate. The scientists have stated it's likely one evolutionary jump away from affecting human beings. Here we go. This is the zombie apocalypse. That's what you're on about, isn't it? But the thing is, though, with that, there is also a fungus in the Amazon rainforest that affects ants in the same way. It's a parasitic, uh, parasitic fungus that lives inside the ants, and until it grows too big for the ant itself, it bursts out, kills the ant, and then sits there and waits for its spores to infect more ants. Um, it controls the ants, doesn't it? It makes them walk and everything. Yeah, so it, may, it controls the ants until it gets too big. And then it it then produces the spores. So, you know, the, these these things are all over the place. You know, and, and you could say most viruses are one step away from affecting humans. I mean, I you take know. swine flu and 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 all of that lot. You know, it was the reason why it got called swine flu was because it affected pigs, and then eventually it it mutated so that it was able to affect humans as well. Kreutzfeldt Jakoff disease was supposedly only in cows until it started infecting humans. Oh, uh, spongy form. Yeah, yeah. And then think Sorry. about all the labs that play around with these chemicals, and viruses, and see what if they can do. What you mean, like the labs that didn't have anything to do with it, and it came from a wet market? Right, or the ones that you know are still weaponizing stuff, just waiting to be used in the future wars. The labs in uh, Wuhan that were, were paid by the uh, WHO to uh, develop this virus, just so mm -hmm. they could just keep an eye on it and do this, that, and the other, you know, that the WHO knew nothing about. That's because they were too busy singing. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, um. there's so many things out there. And I'll tell you what I've noticed with the, the, uh, the stuff that we, we, we go into. Everything seems to come full circle. It's because whenever we've, we've reported, because like before you came along, Josh, Wayne and I, you, we talk about all the different stuff and we'd say, you watch this. And it always happens in three year things, doesn't it? What we what we say is going to happen about three years later or, or so, it happens and it's all on the news and everything. And it's like, because I remember when, when we were talking about the engines, and stuff, we, <laughs> Kill Bill is a cool movie. <laughs> it is. <laughs> That's completely true. It's like we were saying. Like I remember a few years ago, we were talking about the theory of faster than light travel, yeah, that's what or yeah. as fast as light travel. Yeah. Um, and now it appears that Elon Musk is um, has actually had 
a press conference about an engine that Tesla are developing, which will enable fast as or faster than light travel. So, you know, it, it's proof that obviously the theories that you see on TV shows or these far out ideas that seem far out now are starting to become reality years later. The only problem is going to be is, is that once you come out with these ideas, you're going to come full circle and it might end up biting your own ass. And it, it's very similar with our bobberment. Our bobberment turned around and said, you know, we're going to phase out uh, diesel and petrol cars by 2030. Now it looks like that our bobberment is going to stop electric cars from being on the road because of the safety aspect of them catching fire. The so now we've got we've now got six years to find a different type of fuel for the cars, or we're all in deep shit. <laughs> we all know that they're going to go over to uh, hydrogen. We all know that. The thing yeah. with the electricity, as we we reported a few years ago, there was a secret meeting between the bobberment of the time, who happened to have their head echelons were heads of energy giants or their family were or their best mates were and there was a deal done off the record uh, that they all denied where they would gradually hike up the cost of electricity gradually hike up the cost of gas petrol everything and then they would go oh it's so expensive now what could we do what could we could make electric cars we could make electric cars that's right. Supply your electricity, buy your electricity from us. We'll put it up even more. And then the car that you've got is going to cost you almost a week's rent just for one full charge. And it was all done purely out of greed, out of money for the shareholders, because most of them were at the time top bods in the in the bobberments of the time. <clears throat> but now there's so many people now so many people are coming out with their own versions of hydrogen cell car but it can't be stopped yeah exactly exactly yeah. i think it's next. gone out there too much too many people have gone out there and got this is how you convert your petrol diesel car to hydrogen cell car and it's quite simple to do and so well, many people now are pushing it out there that the, the bobberments and these big oil companies can't stop it i can't do bugger all about it no there's in the past, as we know, we did a show about all the people who have disappeared uh, or, or have suddenly had a case of being unalived. I hate that. They were killed. Um, you know, uh, all these people that invented all these different types of engines and perpetual motion engines and all this, that, and the other alternative um, energy sources, uh, uh, zero point energy, all this sort of stuff. And it's all been invented. And every time they've, it's been invented, somebody, the, the one, a bobberman has tried to buy the bite off them and they've gone no and then with about three within about three months of that happening and then going saying we're going to go public they've ended up dead strange yep. that every single one of them very strange i mean tesla tesla was probably the biggest high profile case and i, I was watching something the other day about um how tesla had visited paris and had 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 lengthy conversations with eiffel obviously right, yeah. who, built, who built the eiffel tower and it turns out that there were experiments done in the eiffel tower and it was again like his um the tesla coil that he built yeah the energy towers and the eiffel tower was a is is on that same sort of setting that's right it is there for that purpose yeah well the hotel and, that um, tesla died in the entire because he was put there by the bobberman and the entire insides of that hotel were done and it can transmit energy yeah it can collect it and transmit it so again although although we're not using it the the um the base of it's all there to be used if and when it's needed so if there is a worldwide shortage then we could obviously just switch them all on and there you go free energy yeah. Exactly, exactly. I'm just uh, reading what Catherine said there. Uh, Wayne, the irony is that they've had over 30 years to fully resort to other forms of fuel. They don't give a goddamn, mate. Uh, we have more than 10,000 years worth of clean fuel sources, but insist on going through the most environmentally damaging fuel sources. Yeah, yeah. 
And it's it's because of that. It's because of that. Yep, you it's know? all money. Yeah, that's all yep. it's down to. And at the end of the day, when you're dead, you can't take it with you. So I mean, we all we all stand there and say the best form forms of energy are free, and then but then these big energy companies don't make nothing. Exactly, it's the same with the uh, medical companies. We all know that the, for most of the serious diseases out there, they've actually got the cure. But because they make more money in preventing than they do curing, they will never bring it out. It'll be all oh, we haven't got a cure yet when they fucking have. It's shocking and it's disgusting. Well, that's why here in the UK, the, the Bobberman passed the law to say you're not allowed to pick wild flowers. That's right. Yeah, hedge which so you can't. You can't go to any park in the UK or any woodland and and dig out a dandelion. And we were always told as children, or I was anyway, was always told as a child, don't pick dandelions, don't smell them, you'll wet the bed, uh, the milk of the dandelion's poisonous. But it turns out that dandelion is the best medicine you could use for heart problems. Two of but the then when I you... And then when we looked into it deeper, it turned out that the company that makes or manufactures um, the medication and makes millions of pounds per year by selling the medication is the same company that owns the weed killer company Roundup, yeah. which on their bottle is a dandelion. Yeah. What is... Um, I, I can tell you myself from, uh, you know, I've had the all clear from cancer. One of the things I take is dandelion root extract. There's two things that are anti-cancer. One is dandelion root extract and the other is uh, frankincense oil. Uh, is it frankincense? Uh, yeah, frankincense oil. And I take both of those. And uh, I, my cancer came back all clear this time. So make it out what you will. So, yeah, there's um, too much shit going on, too much skullduggery and too much backroom deals made uh, like all that yeah. with the electricity and the electric cars fuck's sake you know but of course we're all stupid and we don't know yeah well i mean there was a sudden influx of people going out buying electric cars and then it started to slow down a bit because it turned out that obviously to manufacture the batteries was actually causing more pollution than it does to make and and run a, a diesel or petrol car for like 15 years yeah. Um, and then when you have to, when you have to swap over that battery, it costs yeah. you even more. So, you know, there's no, there's no benefit to owning an electric car, uh, environmental wise. See, I, I personally, I wouldn't have an electric car, but I, I do like Teslas. I'd have a Tesla, but for me, electric cars just don't have the range. And when you're charging something that's going to cost you the same as a tank full of fuel. So there's no fucking difference. And it gives you less mileage, like half the mileage you'd get out of a tank of fuel. What's the yeah. point? You know, really? In America, a lot of people have their families living in different states. So they have like eight hour, nine hour, 10 hour and more drives to do. My daughter and my two of my grandchildren live in Somerset and that's a five hour drive for me. I can do it on three quarters of a tank of petrol. If I had a, if I had an electric car, I'd have to stop at least halfway and recharge the damn thing. You know, for five hours. Yeah, it's, it's crap. It's absolute crap. I wouldn't have one. I really wouldn't. I'd have a Tesla well, around. Go on. Just in case Elon's listening. I mean, the thing is, though, is some of these engines they're saying you can do about hundred to one hundred and fifty miles to a gallon of water. That's right, yeah. Now, if, if you could, and that's four and a half liters for us English people. Um, <laughs> um, well, hello, Josh has gone sideways. Hello, sideways. Did he sneeze? Down on there. <laughs> um, so, if you could do 150, 150 miles to a gallon, I mean, a lot of diesel engines will do about 40 to 50 miles per gallon. That's right, yeah. So, you're looking at three times that on a pint of water, uh, on a gallon of water. Oh, he'll be back in a minute. So, if you fill up a, a, a normal sized tank with water, you you could get up to Scotland and back and not even get to half a tank. Exactly, exactly. It's it's. The, I I think that's what there's going to be the way. Hydrogen engines will be here very soon. I mean, they were. I think it was Audi was testing one a few years ago, 
Um, and we, we all know it's going to happen. But is this going to come before whatever the incident is that's going to happen in 2025 and 2027? Are, they, are all these things going to be here by then? I reckon I'll make a bet, a, a bet with you. I'll bet you 5p. I'll bet you um, the warp engine, because we know that's on its way anyway. It's supposed to be out by next next year. The impulse engine is already here. They're just trying to make one capable of doing a starship. Do you reckon that by 2027, the warp engine will be finalized? There'll be ship with it in there, ready and waiting, alongside the impulse engine? Right, well, before I answer, yeah, I haven't got 5p, but I have got three. All right, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah, three people. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't be surprised because the, the bobblements of the world now are going to be put under pressure because of the agreement that they all made about phasing out fossil fuel engines by 2030. Right, yeah. And, and now our bobblement is turning around and going, do you know what? These electric cars that are out there now, all these electric vehicles, because in London, um, TFL have been running electric buses that have been mysteriously catching fire. Yeah, that's right. And once they ca once they catch fire, there's no stopping it because by the time the fire brigade gets there, the fires take hold, and that old that bus is gone. So it's it's proved that it's a waste of time. But they've got to think of something else to put in its place within the next six years to reach that twenty thirty target. With and obviously, the only thing they've got is all these pants that have been filed but have mysteriously disappeared. They're going to have to come back again so that they can be released. Well, it's like all of Tesla's work. There was, there was uh, I think it was seven boxes of his work went missing when, yeah. they, when they went into his room uh, after he died. And seven, seven boxes are unaccounted for. I'm wondering, and this is this is just a stupid little theory of mine. What do you and you guys out there see what you think of it when? these people finally make themselves known by 2027 josh is now back uh do you think that the technologies that we need to keep up with them will will all of a sudden by then be available in vehicles and and to, to replace I, electric gas and stuff i i think it's not going to just be about vehicles i think it's going to be a lot of technology if if and when these these beings come there's going to be a lot of surprisingly there's going to be a lot of technological breakthroughs that are all of a sudden going to appear yeah. before they give us any technology there's going to be like you know all these different things regards to fuel and stuff's all going to start popping up um transportation's going to work out that it's going to be a lot easier and cheaper to run and use um there's going to be stuff that's going to come out that people are going to go wow didn't realize we had that and we're all going to be sitting there going well actually they've had this for ages they just yeah. didn't want to release it exactly exactly um and i think it's i think we all know it's coming i think we all know it's coming yeah. there's a big coming and it's either going to be energy or it's going to be aliens or it could be both i don't know but as we all know there is something coming um and that's not just from us on the show we're not gurus or anything this is from right. everybody so we're mm. time travelers <laughs> yeah, we're, we're TikTok time travelers. We're Martians. What happened to you? Did did, did, did the bobbermans kick you out? You're a Martian. Yeah, that's right. We're, we're talking too much. <laughs> Next week we got a guest on Vinny Vineyard, and he he does lots of stuff in the paranormal world. He's going to be joining us next week, so please tune in for that. I have just seen the time; it is half past. So, Mr. Josh and Mr. Wayne and myself. We've all got a bugger off because there's other people on other networks who join, who jump on. <coughs> we need to free up for them. So I'd like to say thank you very much for joining us. And uh, as usual, gentlemen, very interesting chat. And I love it when everybody in the chat room joins in. It's, it's awesome. So thank you very much. Uh, we'll be back next week. And, of course, you've got these gentlemen's shows in the weeks. Just tell them how many shows are. Tell them. Go on. Uh, I'm off this week. I've, I haven't I haven't been on the <laughs> local, so because I've been so busy. But we've got the Mystical Carousel show on a Thursday at nine o'clock and Fools and Ghouls on at eight o'clock on a Friday. Oh, actually I do have a show on, on Wednesday, I do, I forgot. Uh it's a new type of a show. It's gonna be done by my buddy Nathan Cyrus. He does a lot of the SSP. He's been for years. Um also uh Rob. 
from typical skeptics going to be on there. It's kind of be, going to be like a Hollywood squares here in America with a bunch of different communities from paranormal to extraterrestrial all coming together and talking, sharing notes and exploring how we can go further and better and communicate better as a joint community instead of just shitting on each other. So we'll see how it goes. It's supposed to be like Hollywood squares. We good chance it might turn into Jerry Springer. So <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, in that case, we will see everybody next week. Remember, uh, half past nine every Monday night, uh, GMT, which I think is half past three every. 3.30. Hey? 3.30. Central Standard Time. There you go. See, I knew that. I knew that. I knew that. <laughs> we'll see you all next week. And uh, thank you for watching. Bye 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 bye. Bye. Toodles. Uh, I've forgotten how the hell to stop this. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Good luck. Wow. Oh, go <laughs> <ahead. laughs>